Well, this is not good. This is a fairly new and very much beloved sweater of mine. And as you can see, it's very bulky. Here's the yarn I used. So this is a good opportunity to show you how to fix a thing like this when it occurs in your knitting. There are several ways it can happen. One is a join that wasn't strong enough. Another is a snag. Another is a moth hole. And another, and I think this is the case here, a join that was made by the factory that wasn't really as good as it should have been. I've got white paper behind this so you can see the full impact. It's only a stitch or two, but in this size, it creates quite a hole. So happily, I do have some of the original yarn. And we will look for a moment at where that yarn should be. You can see part of it sticking out here. So I'll need to retrace the path with my new yarn, like this. What we need to do is try to figure out the path the yarn originally took, and some of it, while a little bit frayed, still does. It came up through here, then it traveled around through here, back down through here, and then would have been continuous to come over there. So what I'm going to do is pull actually more out so that I can get a nice, neat repair going. And once you do that, you may be in a panic that it will run. It's not going to do it just sitting here, but I certainly don't want to pick up the piece, let its own weight pull against it. And that could cause running. Okay, I'm not going to trim off those ends because I'm going to sew them later to make sure everything's secure. It's taken me a minute to decide where to start from. It can be a little bit confusing. I think I'm going to do what you see me doing here, then reproduce this stitch represented by the blue strand, because if you notice, only half of that stitch is in position. So I think that's where our trouble starts. I'm leaving a yarn tail to work with later. Now, do you see how each stitch goes like that, making a chain of stitches up the work? We have half of the blue chain, but not the other. So we're going to make the other. It won't be blue anymore, but in this confetti yarn, I don't think it's going to really matter. Okay, that's one stitch repaired. And you can see my weak stitch at the bottom trying to pull out. So I'll need to be a little bit mindful of that. And the stitch that should be here, looping into these two strands, is totally missing. So now I'm going to reproduce that. And I have nothing to tuck it into at the bottom, because we're missing another stitch. So I'm just going to make the loop and leave it loose enough to attach to later. Now I have here approximately what I had up here before, detached loops. This is weak and flimsy right here, though it's present. So I will reproduce it. Now in real life, this knitting continues on going left but I don't need it to. I've got all my yarn going left. So I'm going to come back to the right. Uh -huh. This loop is not properly secured. So I need to figure out which direction to come up through it. I think this one. If I'm wrong, I can always back out. Now these two strands that are looking vertical right now should actually pull together and make the point of a V. 
on the next stitch. And by the way, the difference between this looking perfect and looking bad is twofold. Taking your time and getting the tension of the new reproduced stitches just right. You can adjust them a bit after the fact, as I'm doing right there. And I did something wrong. See that? And now it looks like it crosses under this more than the others. That was my mistake. I can fix it, though. I'm coming back out. Well, I need to go off camera and release it. I split that blue stitch just now. Back in a minute. Okay, moving on. This stitch is complete, although at present it's a little uneven. I can worry with that and straighten it out about evenness later. But now I should pull the ends of it together by going behind them and go straight down into that stitch. Now let's have a look. This vertical chain of stitches is complete. They still look bumpy. I've got old bits of yarn that need to be tucked back in, but I'm not going to cut them off. I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to do. This vertical chain of stitches still needs help. The one to the right that I'm exposing and running down right now, that's fine. This yarn tail sticking out from it, I'll just weave to the back. So we're almost good. Something is not right coming up here through the blue stitch. So let's see if we can get it to be right. Up. And where there's the stitch that should be pulled together to complete this column. And down. We're pulling the legs of the stitch together right here. And going down here. Great. Now we have the correct columns of stitches. They're continuous everywhere. What we don't have yet is perfect tension. This stitch is sloppy. The yellow one, one leg of it, is a little sloppy. So now I need to turn the work over and very gently nudge all that into position like this, only it works best to do it from the back. Here's a loose end, so of course it's going to need a little snugging up. Then you go back and forth. What else does? This one sure does. Plus, the plies are tending to separate. So I need to tease it in with fingertips or the needle. Looking better for the yellow. Where my thumb is tapping, that could use some attention. So I'm putting my index finger in so I'll be able to see it from back here. And here is why that's loose. So at this point, I'm going to do some securing by tying these together. Okay, I kept playing around with it, and now it all looks pretty good to me. But wait till you see the other side. Not good yet. It's not the end of the world, though. First of all, we're going to have a few bumps on the other side the way I've done this. Because I've got a few places where stitches are duplicated to reinforce the fabric. Plus, we have all these ends, which should be secured and woven in. Given my recent experience where whatever happened to this happened and it started to back out, I am going to choose a method in favor of great security rather in fa than in favor of invisibility on the back of the fabric. First, I'm going to use this little latch tool as an easier way than anything else of weaving in these little bits and pieces of ends. And to avoid it being unduly bumpy on the front, at least, I'm splitting stitches because this is such a bulky yarn and pulling 
through part of a stitch. So I'll do something similar with all the yarn tails. Also doing this means that I won't get the wrong color popping out in a stitch that already has an identifying color. Trying to minimize that. So I'll do this to all the yarn tails. All right, all woven in. It looks quite a lot better. Not perfect yet. And I don't want to cut any of this yet because what I'm going to do is take a needle and thread in royal blue, which seems to me to be a dominant color, and stitch these bits down, like in a darning sort of a fashion. I tied a good size knot, and now I'm going to push the needle again through it, otherwise it'll just pull through the knitting. I'm not sure if anybody else does this at all. It's not really traditional. I was a professional seamstress before I became a skilled knitter. And so this is something that just occurred to me. If you think that um, it's a sin and a shame, don't do it. But I think that I care about the security of this garment and its longevity more than if it has a non-traditional method involved. And the point is that I'm trying to get every one of these little strands of yarn pinned down before I trim anything off. And I'm trying to take fairly small stitches for two reasons. One, that will give me more security. And two, they will be easier to hide in the fabric. I don't really mind that this process shows on the wrong side. But I don't want to take off my sweater and have the people in the seats next to me going, what on earth is wrong with that? Just don't want it to be eye-catching, basically. We're making good headway, though. Everywhere I need to travel, like over to this next yarn tail, I can use a matching stitch to go through. So I'll keep up with this, do some of it off camera so as not to get a crown in my neck, and I'll be back. The darning phase is complete. I'm snipping off my sewing thread, and I'm not going to snip off these strands right close. I want a little sticking out so they don't try to back out from my darning, but pretty close. Some of them disappeared entirely and just got darned right into the fabric. So there's the back. While it is not perfect, it's a look I can live with. Because my main focus was the front, and it's looking good again. It's in clear view, but it took me a while to spot it too. That makes me pretty happy.